Nomu is a newcomer on the Chinese smartphone market but already offers a couple of very interesting devices. One of these is the Nomu S30, a nicely specced rugged phone which seems very attractive on the paper. We put this phone through an extensive real life test. I'm Christopher for China Mobile Mac with the full review of the Nomu S30. The Nomu S30 comes in a brown cardboard box which is sealed in plastic foil and also has some additional seals which show if the box was opened already. Package contents are an English user manual, a Palm Express Plus charger and a micro USB cable. As many other rugged phones, the Nomu S30 has an octagonal shape. Around the body there is a very thick and sturdy metal frame which on the edges is additionally covered by some hard rubber. The hardware buttons are rather large and those seem solid as well and they sit in place tightly. The ports are all covered by rubber caps to prevent dust and water from getting inside. It is very easy to remove the caps, but they never fall off on their own. The rear is covered by some pattern that does look a bit like carbon fiber. On the rear there is a lid which covers the slots for two micro SIM and one micro SD card. The lid can be removed without having to get rid of screws which makes up for easy and quick slot access. Anyway, there is a risk that this lid may fall off in case of hard impacts. Actually the Nomo S30 ain't as robust as the Blackview BV6000 for example, not only because of the lid but also because the whole rear isn't as sturdy. This is clearly noticeable when putting pressure on it. You'd better not roll your car over it if you like your Nomo S30. That of course doesn't mean that the Nomo S30 ain't suitable for outdoor use. Drops onto the floor from 1 meter height have been survived without traces. Also, a drop from the balcony onto grass was survived. We did put the phone outside at minus 16 degrees Celsius for 2 hours as well and no damage was done. The waterproofing works well too, but we don't think the phone will survive depths of up to 5 meters like Nomu claims. What we love is the 5.5 inch Full HD screen. The panel used offers awesomely intense colors and a great contrast. Brightness is very high too. Viewing angles are good and thanks to the high brightness auto readability is great too, which is especially important on an outdoor phone. The control in darkness is easy thanks to back illuminated touch buttons which don't show any light bleeding at all. The touch panel does react very precise and fast to touches and supports up to 10 touch points. A glove mode is there and enables you to use the device even with thick leather gloves. Sadly, there is a little bug with the touch driver that causes issues while playing games. In shooter games, you use two fingers to control camera and movement. Sometimes the TP loses one finger and you need to lift it and touch again for it to work again, which is annoying. The Nomu S30 makes use of Gorilla Glass 3 and this is scratch proof. The surface however feels quite rough, so gliding properties are bad. In addition, the glass is a real dirt magnet and very hard to clean. Thanks to a MediaTek Helio P20 clocked at 2GHz, the Nomu S30 offers a decent day-to-day -day performance. Thanks to 4GB of RAM, multitasking ain't an issue. When we used the phone as our daily driver, the phone only seldomly suffered from minor lags. All in all, the user experience was smooth and enjoyable. Gamers without any big demands will be satisfied with the performance too. Asphalt Extreme runs smooth in XHDPI mode and Unkilled runs smooth too if you set the graphics down to medium settings. The internal memory with 64 GB is rather large and reaches more than 200 MB per second read and write speed, which is very decent. Micro SD cards with up to 128 GB are supported and can be formatted as internal memory. The sensor equipment packs pretty much everything one needs including a gyroscope and compass. A step counter or pressure sensor is not included. The Nomu S30 runs a non-customized Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Right now it is unknown if there will be an Android 7 upgrade. The system aside from Google Apps comes without bloatware. Some additional features they have implemented are the glove mode, settings for the SOS key, Settings for the feature key in case you want to use the SOS button as such, gesture options, and an automatic task killer. Reception quality in mobile and Wi-Fi networks is really good. Band 20 LTE is supported and for Wi-Fi networks the bandwidth drop one floor below the router is minimal. Sadly, the maximum bandwidth isn't very high at 80 Mbit per second. NFC is supported and during our test it worked fine. Sadly, the GPS isn't the best. 
It's hard to get a fix for more than three satellites and the accuracy is only between 5 and 9 meters. In cities, this can be an issue when navigating and also tracking with Google Fit doesn't work too well. The internal speaker of the Nomo S30 sounds rather flat and thus doesn't impress us that much. Also, after contact with water, the speaker won't work anymore for a couple of hours. Through headphones, the quality is alright and the volume is good enough. Telephony quality is good, the noise cancelling works well and the earpiece is really really loud. The main camera of the Nomo S30 is based on a Sony IMX214 sensor with 13 megapixel resolution and an f1.8 aperture. According to the driver file, in some devices, the Omnivision OV13850 sensor might be used, which we already know from the Lenovo K3 Note. The picture quality at daylight is okay, but for sure won't win any prizes. Still, you can take some decent shots with it. In low light, the camera despite the f1.8 aperture doesn't perform too well. But maybe updates can optimize the performance a little bit. The single LED flash doesn't manage to light up large rooms, but for close-ups it does a good job. For video recordings, you can use EIS, which does work well. Videos are recorded in Full HD and look decent, but they do show a slight stutter. The audio is nice, but lacks a bit of volume. The 5 megapixel front camera is okay for selfies with no big demands on quality. The 5000 mAh battery makes the Nomo S30 a long runner. At full screen brightness and intensive usage, we managed to get a whopping 9 hours of screen on time. With dimmed screen, you can squeeze out around 12 hours. Charging sadly takes quite long despite Pump Express Plus fast charging. The battery charge for some reason arises in a linear curve. Usually with PE Plus you get a very quick charge for the first 50-70% to 70 and then it slows down. This means that you can't just charge it for a couple minutes to get a few more hours of battery life. Verdict? The Nomo S30 is a very interesting outdoor phone and definitely a competitor to the Blackview BV6000. Display, camera, memory and battery are just better. But in some categories the BV6000 is better, those are sturdiness, reception quality and pricing. So which of them is the better choice? Well, it depends on you, so you decide. So that's all for this review. I'm Christopher for CMM, see you in the next one.